What's up, amigos? It's Mason here, and we're going to run a league today with Black White Vampires. So, the reason I'm picking this deck is we just saw Red Black, Vam uh, sorry, Red Black Vehicles crush the GP. I think there's like 15, 14, 16. There's a crazy number of them in the top 32. And this is a deck that I think that could be pretty good against Red Black Vehicles. Now, the biggest problem is Chain Whirler. That card is very good against our strategy, but... I think our strategy might be good enough just to beat Chain Whirler anyways, and we're going to talk about that just a, in just a little bit. So let's kind of go over the deck really quick. We have 24 lands, pretty basic. We have two Scavenger Grounds because I think Exile in the Graveyard is a little bit more important than Field of Ruins these days. We have three Legion's Landing, three Fatal Push. Pretty standard stuff here. We need Interaction, and we need to have uh, Legion's Landing to actually grind as Vampires. We have Martyr Dusk, Dusk Legion Zealot, and Legion's Lieutenant. Uh, just... Three solid two drops. They're all going to help us curve out. Legion's Lieutenant is one of our ways of beating Dusky Boy. Uh, I'm sorry, Chain Whirler. Uh, Dusky Boy is a way to find the more stuff. And Martyr is actually a card that's resilient to Chain Whirler, leaving behind a 1 1 vampire behind it. So, uh, replaces itself, makes it so Chain uh, Whirler doesn't matter, and replaces itself are all places I want to be against that kind of card. And that kind of deck that's trying to 1 for 1 and push for advantage. So we have Queen's Commission, which makes two 1 1 lifelinking vampires. Radiant Destiny, which basically says our vampires get plus 1 plus 1 and eventually Vigilance, which is another way to beat Chain Whirler. Uh, we have Cast Out and Ixalan's Binding as more removal for bigger cards. It could be that we need to trim a Cast Out, make it a Fatal Push in the main. So we have the metagames breaking back, kind of like this split right now. We're going to try it. We have four Call of the Feast. This just makes three vampires very just efficient with our deck. And then we have Champion of Dusk. This is our way to power through in the late game. When it enters the battlefield, you lose X life and draw X cards, or X is the number of vampires you control. So pretty easy with this card to draw three or four cards when it resolves. Because of all your vampires having lifelink, you'll just break even on life once you go to your combat step. All pretty self-explanatory. We're a streamlined, you know, tribal deck. There's not a whole lot of room for flex slots. These are kind of like the flexiest slots we have. We could play Karn in the main deck as a way to draw more cards and stay in in the late game. It's something I'm very much interested in doing and trying one day. I also thought about putting Argyle's Bloodfast in the main deck as just a way to make sure we don't, uh, what's it called, run out of steam and have some life gain later on because the back half is actually somewhat relevant at times. But we're going to check the removal package for now. Let's go to the sideboard. For control, uh, we have four Duress. We have one Doomfall and Argyle's Bloodfast and the Immortal Sun. That's our way of beating the control decks. Then against the vehicle decks, we have the Invokes and Settles, Fatal Push, I think our deck is very well positioned against some of the best decks in the metagame right now, which are Snake, uh, assuming they don't have a crazy Ballista draw, uh, Black White Vehicles, and Red Black. So we are weak to the control decks, but we can beat them. So I think this is going to be an exciting league. Our decks, I, I believe, fairly well positioned right now, and I'm excited to put that theory to the test. Last time I thought this was a pretty easy 5-0 with Vampires. I did it over on my stream at twitch.tv slash the Mason Clark. So if you're not following over there, you should definitely check that out. Because we're 5 0 over there with 14 card sideboards all the time. Uh, which you also notice we only have 13 cards here for some reason. Uh, something was not to load correctly. We'll finish, we'll take care of that, and don't worry about that in the final version. All right, and we are here for game number one of round number one with vampires. Uh, we're on the play, and I think this is a keep. It's not the most exciting hand ever, but we have this. For our good friend Chain Whirler, trying to keep them from having too many of those. Now we prefer Radiant Destiny because Radiant Destiny is actually impossible for Red Black to answer. They just don't have an answer to that card currently. So All right, this seems to be some sort of uh, Mono Green Stompy, Green Black Constrictor, or I forgot the name of it, uh, the Green White Legend deck. So We're, we've got a good, pretty good matchup against most of that. The, the hard part with Snake is if they get a Ballista and Snake activations going, and we don't have Lords to protect our tokens. Now, looks like we are playing in some sort of Snake build that's playing Llanowar Elves. So the best cards they have for this are probably Bronzedon and Jade Light Ranger. Alright. So this could also just be Mono Green with a not loading Woodland Cemetery. Uh, Stompy, just splashing black. Sometimes you see them black splash, but slash black for duress and stuff like that that's pretty good so we're gonna play this i just want to make sure that we actually have uh, a lord effect in case it is some sort of weird green black snake deck and they get into ballista territory 
Just trying to keep our board around. Also, if we draw into Call of the Feast, I want to play all the vampires I can while still keeping them alive against uh, potential ballistas and whatnot. When I played this deck before, Modern Green Stompy was hard. It wasn't impossible. So this does seem to be a Stompy deck. All right, so we drew Cast Out. Quite good against this. Um, and also is good against Galta, which is what we'll probably save it for, honestly. Uh, so let's just play a Queen's Commission. An army of three threes out, and then we'll pass the turn back. So Galta is probably the best play for our opponent. Um, it's just a 12 12. Otherwise, we're about to draw four cards and gain four. I'm sorry, draw four cards, lose four life, which normally isn't the most exciting thing against a green stompy deck, but I think we're okay with it. Is it Galta? No, this is Scrounger. So they're, they're splashing black for Scrounger and duress in the board. Okay. So we can cast out this. Not a big fan. While it does make all the, uh, their cards better, because they can pump them to like get through extra damage. We have the lifelink, and now we have Vigilance on our team too. Okay. The next turn, we're going to have a lot of options open to us, so we're just going to wait one more turn cycle. All right. This Woodland Cemetery art not loading, along with this forest art not loading, is really bothering me. But what doesn't bother me is what great deals you get at Oasis Games. So check out Oasis Games. All right, so they're playing their whole hand. No Galta or anything like that yet. So our cast out's going to be pretty effective at taking over this game. We have Sheffit Dunes 2 to pump the team if we wanted. A lot of options here. So I think what we want to do is play Legion's Landing and flip it and then leave up cast out uh actually do we want to maybe hmm right, we're gonna play the chef of dune because we might pop it so we could play legion's landing pop chef of dune attack with the two lifelinking vampires and the seven seven vampire and then they would kill oh, the upside the six six would become a seven seven they would kill every every creature we attack with we would have a legion's landing though for the rest of the game which is tempting. I think it's probably better to cast out this and then attack. So let's just lead with that. Because we might end up just playing a Martyr of Dusk instead. Kind of depends on what they do here, if they have any sort of like blossoming defense. Which is completely reasonable, right? They have two cards in hand and all this mana and they're not playing something. It also could just be another Ronus because of Legend Rule. Alright, so it was blossoming defense. Alright, so let's play Martyr of Dusk. This will allow us to have a chump blocker and just another creature we can throw under the bus when it comes time to attack. Because we do want to flip Legion's Landing into Adantos. Once we have Adantos, we'll be able to make a vampire return. The board stall will be fine. Fatal Push, that's pretty good. Now, I'm going to assume they have a Blossom Defense in hand. Let's lead off with Dusk Legion Zealot here. Losing a life. But hopefully finding another lore type effect. Alright. Land isn't the worst. Play the planes. We'll just tap it. So now we're going to move to combat and we're going to attack with our team. By our team, I mean just the ones that are expendable. Now we've got Adanto's first fort flipped. We'll probably fatal push whatever they pump. All right. If they have Blossoming Defense, now's a good time to get rid of it. All right, so they did have a Blossoming Defense. Oh, they just have another Ronus activation. Sure. Okay. They just want to make sure their Ronus can block. That's fine with me. All right. So we lose some vampires, but we're going to break even on one, and we have Adantos for the rest of the game now. 
So, still plenty of lifelinking vampires. And honestly, just vampires to hold back their team. They could pre ascending end with this to trade. Now they have some creatures in the graveyard. But I guess this kind of checks that. Alright, four blocks. We'll make one. And we'll just take this one. They might pump. Okay. Or no real need to get... Oh, okay. Well, if the card in their hand is Blossoming Defense again... Let's play the Swamp. We're going to try and see if they have the old Blossoming Defense before we attack. Once again, they might just have a Ronus. Okay, they conceded. Completely reasonable. So, cards against Mono Green, we bring in three Settles. It's a card I don't expect for them to think we're going to have. Actually, I think we kind of want Binding more than Cast Out. We'll figure that out in two seconds here. Um, the other card we want is Fatal Push. And I think Champion of Dusk, while pretty good and was good at stabilizing us there, can sometimes be a bit of a liability. So we're going to just put one in there. I think with the new arrangement here, we're pretty good. I'm not sure which we want, because we do want to be able to maybe cycle if we need land drops. But binding a Galta is much better than cast downing a Galta for obvious reasons. They're all weak to um, thrashing... Excuse me, I'm so sorry, thrashing Brontodon. So I'm cautious there. But we do have these three settles, so I think... Actually, because of the settles, I think we want cast out. Because that will let us leave up Settle and Cast Out. So. There's maybe a world where we bring this in over this, actually, just because it's another Anthem. Uh, but it's weak to Brontodon, so I'm not excited about doing that. Alright, we're going to keep. We have interaction in the early turns and we curve out, so. Alright, and we're going to answer that. So, hmm, hopefully that slows them down. All right, seems to have successfully done that. I think we're just going to play Martyr of Dusk, try and get some damage in. It is possible we're supposed to maybe just Dusk Legion Zealot and develop our hand more. Steel Leaf Champion, all right. Play Dusk Legion Zealot, try and hit the land drop. Alright, well we hit the land drop, so let's play it. And we can't attack, so we, and we can't block either, so we're just going to sit back. Once we play our Legion's Lieutenant, we actually will be able to block. So that is something to keep in mind. Let's see what they reveal with their Merfolk Branchwalker. Another Steel Leaf Champion, that's probably going to stay on top. Our settle is going to be pretty good. So, drawing another 2-drop would be pretty good. The land isn't the worst. We need to actually, like, curve out on the board, though, because we want to answer all the Steel Leaf Champions at once. So I could play this, but it doesn't actually do that much. If we play Call the Feast, if we draw uh, Radiant Destiny or another Lord, we can actually slam back in at them. So we can attack for 2 here. I kind of like it. Gets us some damage in for later, and if they block and trade, we get another life-linking vampire to race. But we do want to leave these back to block this. Or potentially not block it if we think we need to play that way. But currently, we would be dead to a blossom. We would not be dead. Sorry, this has summoning sickness. All right, so they're holding back so that nothing terrible happens to them. Legion's Landing. Okay. So now we can play Legion's Landing plus Legion Lieutenant. What happens if we do that? So we would attack for... We would want to attack with Dusk Legion Zealot, Lifelinker, Lifelinker, putting us to 13. 
we would lose at least the lifelinker. But we would gain a Dantos, which I think is worth. Now there's a world where we just play Legion's Landing and attack and hold up settle, but I don't think we actually want to do that yet. I think we just want to look like we're curving out and have them alpha strike into us. So. And then this can actually block now because it's more than two power. So we want to leave it back just in case something goes terribly wrong. Yep, so they did block. So we're going to go to 13 and they're going to fall down to 14. So now it's going to look like we're leaving up uh, Danto's Vanguard, uh, Danto's first thing. Hopefully we draw like a land or something like that if we're going to draw something along those lines. So that's an interesting thing. Whoa. So I want to block here because I want to actually save enough to make them attack with the most things possible. So we drew a land. If we go for it and they have blossoming defense, we lose the game. So this just looks like we're holding up another vampire activation. And if they have duress, so it's interesting. So if they have duress and they duress us, we're going to lose the settle and probably lose the game. But if they attack with everything, I guess they're only going to attack with the Steel Leaf Champions because that's all they have to attack with. I didn't actually think about that. That was silly. Just me being a little silly goose. I guess we should have attacked with some of the vampires and thrown them away. That seems a little loose. Alright, let's try and cast out this. If the cast out works... Probably Blossom in Defense. Okay. That's kind of what we expected. We currently have 12 power on board. So we're going to lose our board, but we would kill the Galta. By doing it this way too, we potentially get to attack in, right? If they don't have the Blossom in Defense. Oh, that's actually terrible news for us because now we lose our Lord. Wow, they went really big post board. So I think we're dead now if we don't draw an answer to Galta. And they need to not have Blossoming Defense. So if we block like this, we absorb 2-4 damage, we die. We block like uh, this, we're absorbing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because of lifelink, right? So we would go to 1. So we're going to try going to 1. If they have Blossoming Defense, I don't think we can win the game no matter what we do. So... It's going to be hard. I guess we can draw a Settle. Call of the Feast. Interesting. I don't think it's going to matter. If we had the Lord still, we could probably attack and create a racing type situation or something, but I think we're just dead. So I think what we really messed up is we made it so that the only the Steel Leafs had to attack. So now I can make another vamp. We're just dead, actually, right? Because we block with everything to absorb enough damage. But we're just going to die. Because it would be 6, 12. Yeah, we would just die. We're kind of abyss at that point. Because they have a uh, Vraska. So close. So they kept in the Blossoming Defenses. I mean, that's fair. I still think the Fatal Pushes are all really good. They kill those uh, Steel Leaf Champions as well. Cool. Champion of Dusk. Hmm. I think it's good. We saw them bring in uh, Vraska, so I'm hesitant even more so to bring this in because I think they can bring in Bronzadon. So Champion Dusk would have pulled us out of that situation for the most part, assuming we had drawn it on the turn they vraska So we will see. We will see. I guess it wouldn't have really pulled us out. We would have been in it because we would have had to have attacked and gained life, then played it, and then drawn an answer. But it wasn't out.
I think the settle still was good. It's also possible that what we should have done is cast out the Steel Leaf Champion on an earlier turn, forced a Blossoming Defense there, and then maybe they got more attacks in. So, not exactly sure. I still think I do like cast out V uh, Exelon Binding because of the settle. So, all right. So this hand is very, very, very good if we draw a land. It is pretty much unbeatable. It has to be a black land, though, is the thing. I'm going to mulligan. Alright. This hand is good. Uh, so that gives us a turn 3 play. So we're going to keep it. So now we're going to go this into this plus Legion's Landing. Alright. Another elf. Another one to die. I used to play Profane Procession in the sideboard, which is kind of good in this matchup. Kind of depends on if they draw their Brontodons or not, right? Our opponent seems to have AFK'd. Alright, there we go. If we draw Radiant Destiny, playing these are better because we can just attack in. We don't have Champion of the Dusk to play to next time, like last time. Part of Kieran into the reveal zone, yeah. It's definitely one of the problem cards for our deck if we can't get enough attackers going. Played Elf, can't abuse Elf. Feels good. So, I think we want to actually just play Martyr of Dusk, because it's actually a blocker we would want to block with. And if we want to attack in, we would want rather attack with that one if we need to to flip the Legion's Landing. Then attacking with two Lords. Attacking with one lord is risky, but we'd at least have one left. It's not great. Because we might just have to flip this. So it looks like they might have a Galto or something on their end. Interesting. So this land means we have Settle Mana. If I play this Legion's Lieutenant and they have a Blossoming Defense, we're in trouble. But... I think we just want to play this and battle. It is weird to want to throw away a Legion's Lieutenant. Oh, do they have like a Fatal Push or something? What was that? Alright. Well, we're going to attack with everything, so if they have a Fatal Push, they do. I just think we want to get the, or the first Legion going. Oh, Crushing Canopy. Okay. That was really good for them. This attack is not good now because now we lose the Lord with no real upside. Before we were trading it, which was good for keeping Galta at bay while also giving us uh, a play every turn, right? That was the thinking. Like, all right, you know, slow this down, do that. It was suspicious they didn't play hard to Kieran. I probably should have been able to figure out that. All right, so they put that in the graveyard and then they played their heart. All right. So Queen's Commission. So probably should have actually, I actually should have saw through that, right? Like why would they not play Heart of Kieran? They'd have to have a removal spell. And I probably should have just attacked with the not, without the Lord. Um, this turn we're going to just pass back though, again. We put ourselves kind of in an awkward spot, but we have lots of really good draws from here. So not super worried. Is this a Galta? A Vraska. I am suddenly worried. The Vraska is also good against our Radiant Destiny, so we need to draw a Lord right now to kill the Vraska. Any Lord will do, though. Oh, wait, can we just actually kill Vraska now by throwing away our team? They crew. Yeah, so we, we need to do this. We need to kill the Vraska. We can't beat that card if it keeps ticking up. So I imagine you would just crew, because you might as well. Yeah. Then you kill off these vampires, the small ones. Oh, interesting. I guess that one can maybe block Steel Leaf Champion eventually. Is the thinking so? 
but it leaves my board bigger, which is good for me. So, not exactly sure what that was about. Wow, okay, this is a Galta. It feels like a Galta. All right. So, Chef at Dunes. Gonna play it in case we draw uh, like a champion desk and need to play a land plus a spell afterwards. We can attack in to the Galta. But what we can do is when they attack with Galta and Heart, settle the wreckage. In fact, just attacking with the Galta is probably enough to trigger it. Since it's just so big. If they play another one, we're going to probably be in pretty big trouble, but taking the life would be pretty big as well. All right. We want champion of desk here. We want spot removal. Just any way to break through this. All right. Land, not exactly what I'm looking for. Another reason to play the land is for uh, Dusk Legion Zealot into a play. So. Now, one good thing about all this is we, if we're drawing lands, we might be able to go Lord plus Chef at Dunes on a turn and attack for like. Uh, I'm going to be 12, 15. So, looks like our opponent does have a blossoming defense, which is annoying. One interesting thing, though, is okay, so that's a lord. We're going to play this. If we attack now, we'll lose one, they'll gain three. We potentially even lose more. We can wait and make them all three threes and attack for. A lethal, air quote. So, we'll just wait for now. Also, if we draw another Lord, another Radiant Destiny, just, or I guess we'd rather draw a Legion's Landing. Our opponent has sent us a message. Let's see. That's a card. Indeed. <laughs> opponent joking around, saying that's a card with us. It does play. Fatal Push is a pretty good draw for us as well. Let's us clear the way of this Heart of Kirin. Rashing Bronzedon. That's a card. So our opponent is creeping ever so further ahead. Oh, interesting. They're going to battle like this? Whoa. They didn't even use the lifelink. Oh, they want a crew. We're going to attack for lethal. And they have fatal push. They have fatal push. If they have Blossom Defense, I mean, sorry. They didn't give Lifelink. All right, we've won. To be fair, though, if they had given Lifelink, we would have just Fatal Pushed. Regardless, we'll see you all in the next.